Earlier this year, the Journal of American Medical Association published a study showing that medical debt had supplanted all non-medical debt as the largest source of consumer debt in collections in the country, totaling $140 billion before you add in 2020's share, which is still unknown. That's a lot of phone calls at dinner. You know, can you imagine a parent like sitting there and like, like putting dinner on the table and suddenly the phone rings and it's a debt collector? And it's very likely it's going to get worse now that the insurance companies have reinstated cost sharing for COVID-related ailments. So this is really remarkable and incredibly troubling. Um, right now, if you, I don't know if you've been following this at all. I hadn't really been following these associated charges. Uh, have you been following this at all, David? Like the, the medical charges aspect of this? A, a little bit. I've just started following it recently, yeah. I, I didn't know you know, that a lot of the associated charges had been waived, right? I mean, I knew some of this, but I didn't realize that now a lot of those have expired. And because a lot of those waived charges association, associated with COVID, that's gone now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, now you got I mean, COVID, you went to the hospital, you stayed in the hospital, you didn't pay anything or you paid very little at the beginning. Good, right? Yeah, well, I mean, the pandemic's, pandemic's over though. So that's, I mean, that should be fine, right? Business as usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't have to worry about it, I guess, right? It's all back to normal now. Back to normal Americans suffering and swimming in <laughs> massive amounts of medical debt, right? But over the last year, states have been dropping requirements that these insurers cover these bills entirely. And increasingly now, insurers are bringing back copays and deductibles. Even in the beginning of this year, one third of all insurers were still covering all costs related to COVID. And while many Americans have insurance that might actually cover a decent chunk of their hospital stays, others with very high deductibles could be on the hook for a lot of money. How many of you watching right now, just drop me a comment, have medical debt as a result of COVID? This weekend, I read this article that shocked me in the Washington Post. The Washington Post highlighted the story of Jamie Azar who got COVID, uh, it, it got COVID 11 days after getting the J&J &J vaccine. So vaxxed, gets COVID. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Azar, who then spent the last month on a ventilator, okay, debilitated, right, was still, will still have to attend rehab for months, if not years, because the havoc that the virus wreaked on her body. She makes... $36,000 a year and her employer provided health care has a huge deductible. So she now owes thousands of dollars that she doesn't have. And I'll read and I'll quote from the article uh, from this from this uh, Wall Street, uh, excuse me, the Washington Post article, uh, Jamie Azar, a, a widow with no children, uh, is 57, part of an unlucky majority. Her experience is a sign of what to expect if COVID as most scientists fear, becomes endemic, meaning a permanent regular health threat. The carrier for her employer health insurance, United Healthcare, reinstated patient cost sharing on January 30th. Because January 30th, we were out of the clear, we were out in the clear on this thing, <laughs> right? January 30th? Okay. That means because she got sick months later, she could be on the hook for the $5,500 in deductibles, co-pays, and out-of-network charges this year for her care in a Georgia hospital near her home, including her ICU stay. According to estimates by her family, they anticipate she could face another $5,500 in uncovered expenses next year as her recovery continues. Bills related to her stay at the out-of-network rehab hospital in Tennessee could climb as high as $10,000 or more. And you said she had been vaccinated for 11 days. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you... Her go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, did you see the article where Delta Airlines is going to start charging unvaccinated employees a $200 premium on their insurance? If they don't get vaccinated. If they don't get vaccinated. But this story shows that they're not going to get, can potentially not get the result that they're going for. Like that's so that people don't get it. 
Well, and ha you know, that's the question is like, how long does it have to be in your system to, 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 to provide you the immunity? Is it one day? Is it two weeks? Is when you're, you know, it takes two weeks for it to be solid in your system to show who knows. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, nevertheless, you know, should she be on the hook for these $5,500 in deductibles? No one in this country should be on the hook for anything pandemic related, anything, because it's not their fault. I mean, this shines, as we talked about here yesterday, right? This shines, regardless of where you come down on the whole discussion right now, back and forth politically, and no one should have to pay for this, right? The government should be protecting its people and taking care of its people. The, you know, they've lost their jobs. On top of that, now they're being saddled with these enormous uh, deductibles to cover things that should be covered by our federal government, but it's not. Richest country in the world. $5,500 in uncovered expenses next year that she's going to have to deal with this as this recovery continues. Bills related to her stay at the out-of-network hospital in Tennessee could climb as high as $10,000 or more, her relatives have estimated. But they acknowledge they were uncertain this month what exactly to expect, even after asking United Healthcare and the providers. Unbelievable. And how much, like, how much did it cost you total for your hospital going and getting tested and zero? So, zero. so you're so so over there. You have somebody that goes in the hospital on an incubator for let's say they're in there for thirty days. Um, you know, and they're and they're getting the best of care and all that. When they walk out, like, does that go on their credit? Like, you know, how 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 much is their debt? No, it's covered. There's no debt. And by the way, it's not a debt society. I mean, you have to understand these are things how this a totally different way of operating is, you know, is the United States, this for-profit healthcare system. You know, only place in the world where you can flip on television and have commercial after commercial after commercial be for medicines where these companies make 10 times the amount per pill than they do in other countries. Massive for-profit system. So, so you don't have, when you go to the doctor over there, you don't have people walking in saying, doctor, you know, I've heard of this drug and I'd like to try this. Oh, okay. No problem. I don't, I've not heard of it either, but you know what? Saw it on I'm TV. Gonna, I saw it on TV. I saw it last night when I was watching Matlock. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was watching Jeopardy last night and there was some, uh, I saw some medicine for, uh, you know, if you got a pain in your groin, contact your doctor to see if this medicine could be right for you. Do you have a you know pain what? in your groin? You know what? I, honey, I do have a pain in my groin. Side effects may, can, may be pain in your groin. Headaches. <laughs> Side effects may include death, nausea, <laughs> vomiting. I got another question, though. So, you know, because over here, I mean, your, your socialist medicine crap you have over there in your country, um, yeah. you probably had to wait in this long-ass line and, and got really bad care. I mean, were the doctors even wearing gloves and masks and stuff? I mean, or was it... You know, I got an, I have an amazing doctor and the, the wait time to see that, first of all, I didn't even have to go to the hospital. I was able to do it via telemedicine. Um, any other time I've ever gone, um, I had the dermatology appointment, make an appointment, go get a little slip out of the thing. When you get to the th register the, or the thing, signing in, boom, up on the screen, big digital screen, like here, here's where you go next. You're, you're up next, boom, go. And you're there, you, you go and I'm in and out like in a record time. Rather than yeah, sitting but the, there for the hours. hospitals are all overwhelmed right now, so there's no way that they got you right in, right? I mean, no, you're fine. So what you're telling me is you got you got everything done, tested in and out, no problem whatsoever, no waiting, very good care, and zero dollars. Yep, I don't believe you. Show me your bill. I don't have a bill. <laughs> <laughs> I would show you my bill show you the pain of my groin and then and then did they you said they called to follow up to make sure you were still okay yeah and you know truth be told i did hear from a couple of viewers yesterday that said in america that's happening as well where they've been gotten some phone calls and follow-ups from their from their doctors and so forth that's great um you know i can say in my experience in, with american healthcare system that's incredibly rare <laughs> that's yeah. incredibly rare well and that's coming from um, a good doctor that's not coming from the <laughs> national that would be like the FDA calling you. Right. Hi, right. this is the FDA, and we just wanted to make sure you're okay and that uh, you're, you're covered. And 
and we just want mm -hmm. to let you know we got your back um yeah you know or how are you doing and so these insurance companies you know they're driving of course these insurance companies drive everything make sure that they're getting the profits so that twenty one thousand dollars that this woman has to pay that's more than half of what she makes in a year how do you get out from underneath that in you medical don't. debt and then it goes on your credit report yeah and by the way that's a lot of money right and it's going to be a lot of money for a lot of people over a lot of years we already have more medical debt so i, I wanted to bring this statistic to you because we've been talking quite a bit here on the show about student loan debt right uh federal student loan debt makes up one about 1 1.5 1.6 or 7 trillion dollars in debt for students right medical debt it just blows that student loan debt away not even in the same ballpark trillions of dollars in debt because of americans i mean think about that americans are crushed by medical debt number one more than anything else it's been sent to collections millions and billions of dollars sent to collections so much of this now is being sent to collections regarding covid related Very, I mean, compared to the non-medical debt that's been sent to collections, talking student loan debt. You know, insurance companies have realized that COVID is likely going to be with us for a very long time. And now they're treating it like it's just any other illness, which means they're going to go back to doing what they do very well, which is cover as little as possible, because that is quite literally how they make money. That's because those risk mitigators, they're like, oh, we can't, we can't keep doing this. This is uh, we're getting ready to go slightly into the, like out of the green. Like we're, or, mm -hmm. or we're entering where we're not going to make massive profits. So we got to stop. They're like, yeah, wow. Well, you know, we gave you your six months of like pandemic related stuff. Now we, we want our money back. Unless you happen to live in one of like two states that are still making it mandatory to cover this. I think it's New Mexico and Vermont. Those are the only two states that are making it mandatory to cover 100% of COVID related uh, care. That's it. Vermont and New Mexico. Out of all 50 states, that's it. How quickly they all just fell off, right? They're like, oh, we're good. We're back to normal. Good. We're back to charging people like crazy and making them suffer and go into wild credit card debt just to, just to pay their bills. You know, my father, when he passed away, you know, here he was, and God, I wish we would have known this, but, you know, he was a veteran and he should have had access. And I, I this is a problem, you know, like, a system that makes you jump through all kinds of hoops to sign up for things. And you go to some of these other countries that have a, you know, you have like a health number. So they have all of this tracked already. They already know it and they're preemptive. Sending you emails ahead of time, knowing that, hey, this is coming up. You should, this is, we're sending you this ahead of time because we already know it. It's already part of your number. It's already in our computer systems. We're proactive. In America, you better be on top of it. You better figure this stuff out because no one's going to come knocking on your door to give you free stuff. Well, and, and why do you think so many people with mental illness end up, you know, out on the streets and can't get help? Because you're in a system where it's up to you to get it taken care of. And if you got a mental illness, you don't even know what you're supposed to do. And, yeah. and these people, we've got people that have, you know, fought in several wars that are out there dying on the streets because they can't get any care because they don't know where to go. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like somebody comes and picks you up and is like, "Here, are you a veteran? Oh, come on, let's go. We'll go get you taken care of." Yeah, I mean, you know, my father was eighty six, and and he had, you know, he was a veteran. He was honorably discharged. He should have had access to best medical care possible, and he had, as a result, some issues that he had to deal with, um, and for for different medicines, and he ended up, for whatever reason, and I, you know. Yeah, because of the stroke, he wasn't communicating, and my my mom didn't know it. I don't know, and you know he wasn't of his right mind, of course. So then he was putting stuff on his credit cards. He was going into credit card debt to pay for medicines that he shouldn't have had to pay for as a veteran, and that's how just effed up the whole system is, from top to bottom. Yet our Congress and Senate get government run health care. And, you know, like, like the vets, any, anybody who's served this country should get the same benefits they do at the, at the minimum. Yeah. The bare minimum. You know, I, I, this morning I was, I was laughing. I was going to send it to you, but I knew you weren't, weren't awake yet. But this, uh, 
I, this Bernie Sanders tweet yesterday just really makes me uh, furious. I mean, he, he, I'm, I agree with him 100%. He tweeted, you know, it's disgusting. I'm paraphrasing. It's disgusting that, you know, we can have the, the we can have these great pharmaceuticals, right, that can be life-saving pharmaceuticals, but it doesn't matter at all if no one can afford them, right? They and they they rape you basically for the amount of pharmaceuticals uh, prices that they're, they're they cost, and so it doesn't matter because if they're not saving lives because we can't afford them, then what good are they? You know, but in other countries they can afford them because they're not you know jacked up ten times in value. Well, and, that's because uh, in the U.S. they only want to keep the rich and elite alive. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Because and then someone tweeted back, "Enough is an or no?" Because Bernie Sanders said, "Enough is enough." You know, pharmaceuticals, that's great that we can create great pharmaceuticals, but it, who cares if we can't keep people alive because they're too expensive? And someone wrote, enough is enough, Bernie. We don't want your socialized medicine. We don't <laughs> want your socialism. <laughs> like, that's your answer? Okay, so, and all the, I loved all these people. They were like, you don't even know what socialism is. <laughs> you yeah, have most no people idea. don't. They're like, most people fine. think social, socialism and communism go hand in hand. Idiots, 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 all of them. Well, now, I mean, this is another part of the story. You might have noticed something strange in America lately. You flip on the mainstream news and there's news stories out there about Pfizer or Moderna announcing great results in a new test of their booster shots in, in five-year-olds, right? You might flip on CNBC. I, I watch the business networks a lot because I just want to see how they frame these stories they're just so focused on Wall Street and they just don't give a rat's behind about average people, right? And so like CNBC, Fox Business, they're all just, Bloomberg, they'll run with these stories. They're like, Pfizer announcing that it's uh, had great new tests of their booster shots in five-year-olds or two-year-olds or babies or whatever, you know. Um, you might have also noticed that the FDA hasn't signed off on any of these yet or even confirmed these findings or results. It doesn't matter though. It's all over the news. It's all over television. Why? Why is it happening? Well, it's happening all in an effort to jack up their stock value for shareholders. This uh, made headlines this morning, and I just not surprised by it at all. We covered it in the newsletter too, which is that uh, jack up the stock. Vaccine profit PR fluster scientists inflates public expectations. So what's going on here? Well, they're calling it uh, science science by press release and so what these companies these drug makers do johnson and johnson on tuesday you know reported that a second dose of its vaccine provided 94 percent protection against symptomatic disease and then guess what its shares on wall street gave a nice boost in early morning trading so shareholders make some good money then uh then uh, then, then they release this larger, and, and they, they have no larger packet of data associated with it. As Lawrence Gostin says, Pfizer, J and J tout new vaccine results without a larger package of data. We're seeing too much science by press release. But understand, science. these companies have access to third-party companies that are scientists that will do these studies, and they're totally biased towards what they want the outcome to be. I mean, they can mm -hmm. pay these scientists to do these, and that happens a lot. Oh, yeah. It's like when you have, uh, you know, like these studies that come out about how good sugar is for you, you know, P provided. Oh, it's by the Sugar Council. Oh, they did. a. Sh oh, that's amazing. I'm going to stand by that study. Science by press release has been a common refrain from scientists who have cheered advancements, but worry that company statements create public expectations before the Drug and Food and Drug Administration and the CDC even look at the data and determine whether it withstands scrutiny. That process can take weeks or months. Still, everyday people latch on to headline-grabbing developments from the pharmaceutical sector. And I love this part here. This is, I think this sums it up from this doctor from the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. These companies' press releases are not intended for you or me. They are meant for current and potential shareholders to jack up the stock. That's the company. Jo that's the job of the company CEO. Jeez. The problem is they are written in ways that are obvious or tone deaf to how the public might respond in a raging pandemic. So corporate profits are up. 
jack up the profits of these of these vaccine uh, to shareholders. Let them know about these booster shots. The FDA hasn't weighed in at all, but CNBC runs with the stories. Well, they all run with these stories. I got a question that I want to propose to chat. So there was a story that came out not too long ago um, that uh, there were people going into the hospital overdosing on horse paste, right? How many people still believe that that is true? <laughs> Sorry. How many people still believe that there that there were hospitals getting overwhelmed with people overdosing on horse paste? Because, because the problem with these stories is they see them, they believe them, and then these companies know that even if they retract it later, people don't know it. People people don't see the retractions. Mm. So I'm just curious because that story was proven false. Well, as we yeah, as we've talked about, what is it? A, a lie? A lie can travel halfway around the world before truth has a chance to put on its pants or something yeah. like that, right? Um, and you know, so that's exactly what happens, right? These shareholders they don't give a rat's behind how true this is, you know. Pfizer releases this statement and says on Monday that a smaller dosage of its vaccine, they, like they cut the dosage in half or like down to almost nothing for, for ages five to 11, produced a positive antibody response and few side effects. And then they would submit their data to the FDA so they can release a press release making these claims. And then Parents hear it on television, right? They hear it on CNBC and, and, and mainstream media. And by the way, the media has quite, an, a, quite a responsibility, I think, to not report this crap. Like this is a company press release trying, the whole reason they're releasing a press release is to drive up their company stock. That's it. And you're really concerned about helping people? If you're so concerned about helping people, then why wouldn't you maybe give out the, uh, you know, give out the keys to the, the vaccine to these other countries, right? Turn over the data so they could replicate the vaccine. If it's if you're really concerned about helping people, Biden had the opportunity to do that. Why wouldn't he do that? Come on, man. Sorry, Joe. Well, and people are saying they hadn't heard what I was talking about, but I can't. I I don't even know if I can say the name of the actual drug that I'm talking about that people were calling horse paste. We don't know. Yeah. Don't because I'm God not knows, saying who knows <coughs> what happened to our channel again. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. That's the problem. That's this new world order that we're in right now. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.